Now we'll transition to talk about public health and the other health-related sectors. So what is public health? Here is a definition provided by Winslow. Public health is the science and art of preventing disease, prolonging life, and promoting health through the organized efforts and informed choices of society, organizations, public and private communities, and individuals. That sets us up to talk about the goals of public health, which is to basically identify a problem and develop a response. There are several components of this process. The first is surveillance. What is the problem? The second is risk factor identification. What are the causes of this problem? Next, there's intervention evaluation. What works to address this problem? And implementation. How do you implement this problem? How do you do it? The CDC has developed this diagram of 10 essential public health services. I've gone and written these different descriptions on the right-hand side in case it's difficult to read on the diagram, but feel free to take a look at the diagram for additional details. The first process we'll cover is assessment. That includes assessing and monitoring population health and investigating diagnosing and addressing health hazards and the root causes of health problems. The next step is policy development. That includes four subcomponents. The first is to communicate effectively to inform and educate and empower all the stakeholders necessary to develop policy suggestions. The next step is to mobilize community partnerships to further these policy suggestions. The third step is to actually develop concrete policies. That includes the process of creating, championing, and implementing policies, plans, and laws. And then the last component here is to actually enforce those laws. The third step and third broad bucket of essential health services is assurance. The first step of this is that any policy should enable equitable access to care and to health generally. The next step is to build diverse and skilled workforces to be able to implement any policies or any interventions. We should also work to evaluate and improve any policies and interventions, as well as building strong organizational infrastructures to maintain those interventions. This is just generally a list of federal agencies that work in health and health adjacent sectors. We will not dive into these in detail, but this slide is here for your reference of the different agencies. In addition to all of these agencies, there may be others that have overlaps with public health objectives that are not listed. In contrast to the federal level, we have here some common state health functions. These reflect many of the same priorities at the federal level translated down to the state level. However, they include some initiatives that are specific to the state level as well. There is many employment opportunities at both the federal and state levels. However, state levels may be more accessible to most applicants. Some common state health functions include providing Medicaid insurance. We've talked about Medicaid insurance earlier in the payer segment, but it's really up to the states to implement it. Ensuring immunization for the population. That includes for children entering at school level, as well as for any follow-up immunizations that are necessary, including the COVID vaccine. Food safety, which generally also encompasses food accessibility and food policy more generally. There's disease control, which encompasses the management of infectious diseases, as well as for some non-communicable diseases as well. There is emergency preparedness, general epidemiology at the state level, injury and violence prevention, mother and child health care, school health at both the primary and university levels, prison and jail inmate health, mental health and some psychiatric hospitals that are state run, as well as regulating environmental health generally. Here's an example of how the federal, state and local government can respond to the same policy issue in different ways. This image is adapted from a CDC Introduction to Public Health series. It shows the three different components 
of public health services, the three broad buckets that we talked about, assessment, policy development, and assurance. And on the left, it shows the three different levels of policy at the federal, the state, and local. In the first bucket, we have federal assessment of tobacco use. So it's just general surveillance at the national level. Similar at the state level, states can also monitor tobacco use and local governments can do the same. In the policy development phase, at the federal level, the government can ban smoking on commercial flights. At the state level, they can increase tobacco tax. And at the local level, they can pass county laws prohibiting smoking in bars. And then in the third bucket for assurance, at the federal level, there can be federal grants for anti-smoking research. At the state level, funding for campaigns through Proposition 99, and this varies by different states. And then at the local government level, there can be resources to help smokers quit in multiple languages. This is just one example of how these three different levels of government can respond to the same public health issue. This diagram here shows how government agencies will partner and work with different stakeholders to promote a public health objective. Some of the notable stakeholders here include the media, churches, schools, as well as businesses, local healthcare providers, which include the hospitals that we've talked about, mental health providers included. There has been increasing work going towards transportation and community services, as well as on the justice and law enforcement side of things. We talked about public health and how public health is implemented and coordinated by the state governments, as well as other actors involved in the process. Now we will transition to talk about social determinants of health and how public health can expand even beyond what is normally considered health policy. Social determinants of health are factors within the environment, within the society, within which a person lives that impact their health status in different ways. Some factors include education and access and quality to education, access and quality to healthcare, their neighborhoods and the built environment around people, the social and community context in which they live, as well as their personal economic stability. These factors all influence a person's health status in different ways. There has been a broader push to incorporate health considerations in all policies. This is perhaps an expansion of what we traditionally see as a public health model, where it is the state and local governments and federal governments that are involved with coordinating all stakeholders to promote a health objective. Here, health is kind of considered in a cross-policy and cross-sectoral way. That is to say that health is now being formally considered within transportation, within affordable and quality housing, within school systems, within family support and childcare. In all of these ways, health is being more and more integrated into these different areas, and it really expands beyond what is traditionally considered healthcare at the provider, payer, and biotechnology level, well into other services that people receive from the state and other aspects of their lives that are influenced by the social determinants of health. 